is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Dude, uh, I've been talking about this. Uh, we're back to the 70s, and I know you're not mm-hmm. that old, but I am. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, yes, I am. <laughs> uh, I went to, uh, yeah, but I mean, you weren't like biking to the Orange Bowl in the 70s. No, no, no. I was, uh, <laughs> it, uh, I'm old. So, um, but I remember going and watching Joe Montana when Notre Dame came into town. I think it was 79 or something like that. And, um, you know, there's 8,000 people or 9,000 people. Joe Montana was a nobody. It was just, uh, what I'm telling you is, I remember going to the Orange Bowl and watching the Canes when nobody was there. And they were, we could get tickets for a couple of bucks. Or, or I could roll up 3 or $4 together and just give it to the person <laughs> that's tearing tickets in, in, in the Orange Bowl. Because back in the day, you'd, you you have to wait for kickoff. Right. And then everything is settled in. Then you walk up and there's nobody around. You hand the person three, four dollars rolled up and you walk right in and you watch the game. I've done I, I've done that. I, I did that for the Super Bowl mm. for Dallas and the Steelers. I got in for five bucks rolled up. OK, <laughs> nice. a freaking Super Bowl. I mean, but again, this is uh, another era, another time, another place. I think we're back there again because. I, I try to tell UM fans that you got to stop wanting the old days. They're not going to come back. Frank doesn't doesn't care about winning like they do at Oklahoma and Alabama and Ohio State, where the president is with the AD and with mm-hmm. the head coach, and everybody believes at Baylor that football is king, and that at USC, even though they're failing in finding the guy, but they want to go find the guy and they'll spend the money because everybody's in line. Are you there with me already at this point that it doesn't matter even if they fire Manny, they're going to bring in another Randy and another Al or another Manny. They're really not ever going to spend the kind of money they need to get a head coach, an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator. Cause you and I know you got to have about 10 to $12 million a year yeah. just for those three guys. Yeah, I, I am there, and it and it's really taken this season to get there. You know, preseason, we're preseason 14. I went to the game here in Atlanta against Alabama, and I truly thought I bought the BS of 19 returning starters, six-year offensive linemen. Man, he's, done, he's taken back over the defense. We're going to be good. We got the Eric King. He's 25 years old. It's awesome. We're going to be good. And I watched within about five minutes of that Alabama game, we were so overmatched it wasn't even fun. And it was embarrassing. Then I flew down two weeks later to go to the Michigan State game because I am that fan. I want to be there. They announced 45,000 people. That's a damn lie. There was about 25,000 sitting in there, and 8,000 of them were Michigan State fans. Miami fans are fed up. The best thing that may have happened to the program, the only reason I'll disagree about this much, not a lot, just about this much, Kirk Herbstreit saying what he said on college game day, that the program doesn't care, I'm hoping – embarrassed somebody at the university or the somebody's the billionaires, the board of trustee members to where they, and maybe they don't give a shit. Maybe they really don't care because as long as you know why, John, if you drive around town, dude, there's a new medical building all over the place and and they print money, dude. Uh, It's not a matter if they have the money or they don't. My brother, they, they lead the charge in medicine. I am so you you go to the hospital and they'll charge you three hundred dollars for an effing aspirin, bro. When you right. look at your bill, okay. I had five stents in my heart. You know how much it cost me? Well, it didn't cost me. It cost the insurance half a million dollars, oh, yeah. dude. And I was there for only two weeks. You know, I'm so glad half you a said million that. Million dollars. I would be broke for the rest of my life if I had to pay that. They are making hand over. They print more money than the than the feds can print than than Biden's printing right now, dude. They can pay. They have no interest. In and doing. that's the thing. But I'm glad you said that. Oh, and there, there are intelligent people in the media. I have argued on social media probably for too long. And I allow my heart and my fandom to get involved. My argument is the school has money. And I and I've argued with former players. They don't have money. I said, you are so full of crap if you think that school doesn't have money to go pay $10 million if they want to. They don't prioritize it, and part of it because they're all in each other's pocket. Think about this for a second. Manny Diaz has a job, why? 
because Mark Rick wanted him to have a job, and his daddy was the mayor of Miami. Gino Damari has a job as a baseball coach because Paul Damari is one of the biggest big money donors at the school. Neither one of those guys were qualified, and I've always been under the MO. You yeah, do but, not. But, but dude, Gino's done a way better job than than Manny Diaz. Let's give uh, at least sure. let's give Gino a little love because Gino has done more with the baseball program than I ever expected. I thought they were completely dead in the water, and he's actually given them some life. So. Let's give Gino a little love. I mean, he's... Okay. But I think he got the job. Remember, he sat there for the last few years of Jim Morris when Jim Morris had just cracked the program down the leg. My point to that is the board of trustees members are all in each other's pockets. And only if they ever wanted to prioritize football again will it be good. We're at a point where Miami is on the verge of, and I know they're naturally irrelevant right now, they're on the verge of locally to where people just go, you know what? I got other things to do. Oh, yeah. Even the, the 30,000 diehards, myself, the Cutler Ridge Lads, the Mondos, the guys that go to every game, even were to the point. I canceled my season tickets this year for the first time since 2003 because I'm sick of the crap. I'm sick of spending blame. money on dog crap. And that's what the program has become. Yeah. No, I don't. And I don't blame you, man, because that's kind of that's why I think we're unfortunately we're back to the 70s. Can and we find a Howard Schnellenberger? Can well, we find we're, somebody we're, like that? And that's the that's the next thing that I've told fans that the next time you find a good a good coach, he'll have a good year, win nine or ten, get mm -hmm. to the Peach Bowl, the Gator Bowl, and then he's gone. Right. And he's not going to stick around because you're not going to pay. You know, it's like some guy reached out. Well, we should go get Luke Fickle. And I go, dude, Luke Fickle is going to get a top notch job with a university that's going to pay for him to have an exceptional offensive and defensive coordinators because that's what you've got to do in college football and they're not going to spend that kind of money. So even if they do find an up-and-coming coach, it'll mm -hmm. be a stepping stone type of thing and he'll be off and running because in the end, we're not going to provide everything that that coach needs in order right. to succeed. And that, to me, is the problem at the University of Miami. And they could easily – dude, you, you and I know – if they if they actually spent the money on the coaches, it's not like they're not going to get it back. Their right. stadium their stadium will be packed. They'll sell ten times the amount of paraphernalia that they're selling now. They'll be able to charge way more for all kinds of things, from club seats to advertising and all kinds of stuff. There are so many ways that they can make their revenue back from paying for those coaches. But you need an athletic director. That is a lot like, um, um, God, the guy that was fighting Tad Foot all the time. Um, oh, Sam no, Jankovic. Sam Jankovic. You're going to need a Sam Jankovic. And and the guy you have now is no Sam Jankovic. Yeah, and, that's, Sam, Sam, and that's the problem. The Sam Jankovic was a cowboy, and he right. cared about football. And Tad Foot is just like Julio Frank. He yep. didn't give a shit about football, dude. But, he wanted football dead. He didn't want yeah. any parts of the Renegade Canes back in the 80s. Blake and, and James think, is just a puppet fear that is all too. he is. And, dude, I think they fear that, too, that if you go for elite, you're also going to bring in some characters that are going to, you know, give you some stains along the way. My thing is, you know, even at this point, are, are we ever going to be national title good? Probably not. But could we be 9-10 win good in a dog crap ACC and be in Charlotte three out of every five years? Yeah. And that's the part to me that's the most embarrassing. I work with Joe Hamilton, played at Georgia Tech, and I'm nervous we're going to lose to Georgia Tech. I, I just talked to Matt Schaub this morning, and Schaubie was like, I didn't even want to call you, John, because I know how you felt when you missed the field goal. And I have fans that try to tell me, yeah, but they're close. I said, when the hell did the criteria of Miami be our kids play hard and we were close? That's the most embarrassing step back crap that I've ever heard. I get so frustrated every time I think about Miami. I mean, you see, I, I still wear my cane stuff every day. But, you know, Saturday night, 730, I'll sit there, I'll scream and yell on Twitter, and it changes zero.